my brothers and my sisters. Today we talk about a very unique man. A man who is from the students of the madrasa and the school of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man that was described that when he was walking upon the earth, his heart was connected to the skies, reflecting regarding his Lord. This man, it's not easy to talk about him because of his story. A hero from the heroes of Islam. A man that was born in Jahiliya, a non-Muslim. And he was raised in Mecca. And he was a youth and a very handsome youth. Beautiful hair. And he came from the most noble and luxury families. A child that was well looked after and he was pampered. An individual that was described his clothes were from the best clothes that you have ever seen. The class of his clothes. Even his attar. Ta'attara bi ajwadil utur. Hatta ahla Makkah yarah ya'rifunahu min rihi tibihi. That's how he was described. That his attar that he used was so amazing. The smell was so amazing that the people of Mecca would know that this individual walked. He was here. Meaning he was there before and then he left because the fragrance of his expensive utter that he had. This individual that used to hadrami, yalbas hadrami min an nial his shoes were tailor-made from Hadr al Mot from Yemen. So who is this man? Who is this Shab that has been explained with such descriptions? Who are Musa ibn Umair, al Qurayshi al-Badri, min al-Sabiqin, awwalu safirin lil-Islam. Indeed, it is Musa ibn Umair, Musa ibn Umar al Qurayshi, from the first and foremost ones to embrace Islam. And he was the first ambassador for Islam. The first one that the messenger sent out to propagate the Islam. This individual, La yankosu shay'un min ladha idi dunya illa yaftakidu. مَا يُوَصِّلُهُ إِلَى رَبِّهِ وَمَا يَمْتَلُهُ قَلْبًا فَارِغًا بِإِيمَانِ الْخَالِقِ This man came short of nothing. He had everything that he desired except the only thing that was missing was that which would connect him to his Lord. The only thing that was missing, that empty heart that he had the iman of his creator to fill it. This is the only thing that he missed. And due to who he was after Allah was because of his parents. His mother, Khunas bint Malik, كانت ملية وكثرة المال. She was a woman that was extremely wealthy. She was a trader that used to trade from Yemen. And Sham, Syria, and those regions, extremely rich. And she loved her son with a passion. And she gave him everything that he wanted. Reflect on these descriptions of him and the relationship that he had with his mother. But there was something missing. And when he heard the call, Musa ibn Umair, when he heard that call, لَمَّا سَمِعَا نَبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَكْرَعُ الْقُرْآنِ فَدَّخْلَ فِي قَلْبِهِ شَيْءٍ فَصَدَّقَهُ وَأَسْلَمْ When he heard the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم 
reciting the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then the Iman entered his heart. Iman entered his heart and he embraced. فَكَانَ يَأْتِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ سِرًّا مُخَافَةً عَلَى الضَّرَرِ قَوْمِهِ And then he would visit the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم secretly في دار الأرقم ابن أبي أرقم in the house of Arkham secretly to listen to the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى بصره Uthman ibn Talha wa huwa yusalli fa akhbara ummu up until this individual Uthman ibn Talha he saw Musa ibn Umair praying and then he went straight and he informed his mother he informed his mother that he prays like a Muslim huna bada'at marhalatun jadeedatun سيئة من العذاب والنكال والابتلاء. This is when things changed. Another level of punishment, of hardship and trials. أمه وقومه غضبوا عليه غضبا شديدا. His mother and his people, they became extremely angered. فحبسوه وضربوا. They imprisoned him within his own home. And they beat him. They beat him. They took his expensive clothes from him. They even stopped him from having food. Up until his color changed and he lost weight and become very weakened. And he didn't stop there. He also loved his mother. And his mother knew this. So as a punishment, she swore that she will not eat, she will not drink, up until, and she will not take shade, she would go out in the extreme heat, and some narrations mention she would even faint, in order for him to leave the deen of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, walakin thabat, but he remained firm, a man that made hijrah to Habasha twice and to Medina, on our occasion, he returned, فَكَانَ مُشْتَاقٍ إِلَى حَبِيبِهِ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He missed his beloved Muhammad صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So when he returned, he went straight to the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ to visit him. That is the first place. And then his mother found out. This whole story is between a mother and a son fighting for love and religion. And she did everything to turn him away. And she even said to him, Ya Aq, she said, oh, you disrespectful one. You return to a city that your mother is in. And you don't start by visiting me first. He said, I will never begin with anybody except for the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he tried to call her to Islam. فَقَالْ يَا أَمَا إِنِّي لَكِي نَاسِهٌ شَفِيقٌ Oh my mother, I am a sincere advisor to you. Someone who is caring and loving for you. فَاشْحَدِي أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولَ اللَّهُ Bear witness. Embrace Islam. There is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah alone. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger. And listen to what she said. La. La adkhul fi dinik. I will never enter into your religion. 
الدين يزرع برأي ويضعف أقلي I will never enter a religion that disparages my views and weakens my intellect ولكن أنا أدعوك إلى ديني وما أنت علي and I call you to my religion وأنا أقيم على ديني and I will remain on my deen فهي ثبتت على قفرها وهو ثبت على إسلامه and she remained firm upon her disbelief and he remained firm upon his religion فانقلب طرفه ونعيمه ورفاهيته إلى فقر وبؤس وتعب ونصب ولكنه لم يبالي في كل شيء في سبيل الله يهون فثبت مصعب and then his life changed from luxury from bliss from comfort to extreme poverty difficulty and fatigue but he did not care because when you do something for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal then the affair is easy may Allah Azza wa Jal make us firm just as those great men were firm wa sallallahu barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Musab ibn Umair radiyallahu ta'ala an awlu safirin lil islam fa arsalahu Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila al-madinati wa amarahu an yukri'a al-qawm وأن يعلم أن يعلمهم الإسلام، فلقبه مسعب الخير والمقري. مسعب بن عمير was sent by the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to go to Medina and to teach the people Quran and to teach them their religion, teach them Islam. And he was موفق. He was an individual that received the title مسعب الخير. The good one, the one that brings about khair, wal mukri, and he was the first one to receive that title because his kiratul Quran and his voice was extremely beautiful. Recited the Quran very beautifully. Kanadaiyan sadikan mukhlisan. He was a caller to Allah, a truthful one and a sincere one. Dalil, the proof of that is. ما هو إلا آم واحد حتى تسلم المدينة كلها إلا قليلا. It's only a year that went by, and the majority of Medina they embraced, except for a few, except for a few. ومما أسلم على يدي وهذا استوقفني كثيرا. And the ones that he embraced upon his hand. And this makes me stop and reflect, La ilaha illallah. Look at the barakah of his dawah. Look at the caliber of who embraced. هل تعرفون سعد ابن معاذ وأسيد ابن حذير? Do you know these individuals? سعد ابن معاذ and أسيد. Do you know who these are? Then lend me your ear. What the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said about them. سعد الذي اهتز أرش الرحمن له لموته سعد بن معاذ when he died the throne of Allah عز وجل shook you reflect yourself the throne of الرحمن shook because the death of this companion and as for Usaid the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said تلك الملائكة كانت تستمع لك. That the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم informed him that when he recites Quran, the angels they descend and they listen to you. They listen to you reciting the Quran. These are the people that embraced from the hands of Musa ibn Umair. من ذلك ما زال أفكر الناس. With all these great virtues, he remained to be from the most poorest of people. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and he says, 
نظر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى المصعب وإليه إيهاب القبش The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم cried بكى when he looked at Musab ibn Umair because he only had with him some skin, a hide with some fur and the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم looked at him and said انظروا إلى هذا الرجل الذي نور الله قلبه look at this man that Allah سبحانه وتعالى put noor into his heart لقد رأيت بين أبوي يقذواني يقذوانه بأطيب الطعام والشراب فدعاه حب الله ورسوله إلى ما ترون he said verily I did see this man between his parents and they fed him and they gave him drink and water from the best of water and best of drink the best of clothes and then the love of Allah called him the love of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him and the nur came in his heart and now this is his state now as you see him now the day of the battle of Uhud the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dafa'a al-liwa ila mus'ab kama kana ma'ahu yawm al-badr wa huwa ashba' sahabati lil nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of the battle of Uhud, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the flag to hold the flag, to show the flag of the Muslims as he did in the battle of Badr. And the individual by the name of Ibn Qami'a al-Layfi who was with the Kuffar in the battle, daraba yad al-yumna faqata'aha. He struck his right hand and chopped his right hand off and the flag, it dropped. فَأَخَذَ اللِّوَا بِيَدِي الْيُسْرَى فَضَرَبَهَا وَقَطَعَهَا And then he took the flag with his left hand, holding the flag of Islam. And then he was struck with his left hand as well. And his hand was cut. And then the flag, it dropped. Do you think that was just that? That he stopped there? To put up the flag of Islam. The narrator he mentions, فَهَانَ عَلَى الْلِّوَى وَذَمَّهُ بِعَضُوذَيْ إِلَى صَدْرِهِ Then he took with no hands, leaned over and took the flag and put it between his armpits and his chest to hold the flag up. ثُمَّ دَرَبَ الثَّالِثَ Then he was struck a third time with the spear. فَسَقَتَ الْلِّوَى And then the flag dropped and then Musab died. But I say to you, my brothers, Al-Liwail Islam Baqi, verily the flag of Islam, Islam remains after the sacrifice, what these noble men they did, the flag of Islam will always remain. Wallahu mutimmu nurihi walau kariha al-kafirun. Allah Azza wa Jal will continue his light, even though the disbelievers, they hate it. They hate it. And after the death of so many companions on that day, فَوَقَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ in the shuhada, He stood by the martyrs on that day. وَنَذَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ And he looked towards them. And then he recited the verse, مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا آهَدُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرْ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood over them and said that verily there are from men from amongst the believers. They were truthful with their covenant with Allah. They were truthful. And some of them have met, meaning that they have been martyred. And others, they are waiting. And they did not change. They did not change. They remained firm and they did not change. And I'll finish off with a tremendous hadith regarding to explain the state of Musab ibn Umair where he was and we should reflect it's not a fairy tale this is something that has occurred so we can talk about Islam we can practice Islam because of these heroes Abdul Rahman ibn Awf utiya bitta'amin wa kana sa'iman Abdul Rahman ibn Awf he was presented food 
and he was fasting. And look where his mindset was. Look how he reflected. He said, Qutila Musa ibn Umair wa huwa khair minni. Musa ibn Umair was martyred and he is better than me. Faquffina bi burda. That he was shrouded with a burda. A burda, a patched cloth. And he said, if we covered his head, you could see his feet. And if we covered his feet, you could see his head. He did not even have a shroud to cover him. Undur bidayatuhu ajiba wa nihayatuhu a'jab. His beginning was something remarkable and his ending was far greater. Nothing to cover him. And look how Abdul Rahman ibn Awf he thought. Wa qutila Hamza wa khayru minni. Hamza likewise was killed and he was better than me. Thumma busita lana min dunya ma busit. Then verily Allah then opened the world for us and gave us the riches. وَقَدْ خَشِيْنَا أَن تَقُونَ حَسَنَاتُنَا مُؤَجَّلًا And we fear that the good that we are doing, we are receiving here, in this world. He feared that he would not be in the Akhirah. فَتَرَكَ الطَّعَامُ وَيَبْقِي And he left the food and he was crying. This is how the Sahaba were. We should learn about them. The sacrifices which they did for Islam, to preserve Islam, and how we throw it away so easy. How we just neglect it so easy. And they gave their blood. They fought to bring Islam to us. And yet, we are so neglectful of our deen today. And how weak we are. And then we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, why are we in this state? I finish with the statement of Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala an, qal, man arada dunya, he said, verily the one that intends this dunya and wants this dunya, he will be harmed in the hereafter. And the one that searches the hereafter, then you will be harmed in this life. Harm will reach you. And then he said, Ya qawm, fa'adarru bilfani lilbaqi. So, O oh people, be harmed in that which will perish in order to receive that which is everlasting.